Today we're gonna to make a value scale ice cream sundae cone. And for those who don't know, value in art means the lightness and darkness of something or a color. So we are gonna be creating different values of a color ranging from dark, medium, and light using um, crayons. And the way that we're gonna do that is that we are going to use our crayons to create tints, shades, and tones. And for those of you who don't know what that is, a tint is when you add white to a color to make it lighter. A shade is when you add black to a color to make it darker. A tone is when you add both white and black, and white and black mixed together make gray. So when you add gray to a color to make it more grayish and neutral. Now, you can easily make tints, shades, and tones with paint, but it's a little bit trickier to use crayons to do it. But I'm gonna show you the sneaky trick of how to do it. Now, the reason why we're talking about value is because value is the fourth element of art after line, shape, color, and we are going to be using all four of these uh, elements of art in our drawing today. So in order to do this project, what you're going to need is a blank piece of white paper. You're going to need a pencil, a black marker to outline if you have it. If you don't have a black marker, it's okay. And you're also going to need crayons. If you don't have a lot of crayons, at least if you have one color crayon and a black crayon to create our different uh, dark values, okay? So at least one color crayon and a black crayon, at least. If you would like to use a cup or some sort of small circle tracer for the top of your first scoop, that's fine. However, if you just want to freehand it, I'm gonna show you how to get it to be the correct size, okay? So, first things first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay out your piece of white paper on the table in portrait orientation. Portrait orientation means that it's tall and skinny, so not wide and fat, but tall and skinny in portrait mode. And in order to make sure that our scoops um, are the kind of like right size where we can fit all of our scoops on our page, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this piece of paper into thirds. Now the sneaky trick of how to do that is on one side of your page, doesn't matter which, you're gonna take that pincher and you are going to fold the piece of paper over until it looks like the edge of the page is halfway down your page. Do we see the same amount of papers on this side as it is on that side? Then once it's the edge is halfway, you're going to crease and fold, okay? Like that. Now, this other side of our paper, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our pincher and on this edge of our paper, we're gonna bend back our, uh, our fold to have the edge end up right next to that fold that we just made there. So again, I'm just taking it, I'm bending it back, lining up the edge with that side of the fold and crease. Once you have that, it's a really skinny sort of skyscraper shape. You're gonna open it up and it should show one, two, three sections of your paper. And our ice cream cones are gonna fit in this middle section, okay? So what you can do is you can take your pencil and what we're gonna do is right at the top, we're just going to draw a rainbow curve going up, curving down, and hitting the other side of that fold. So again, we're just gonna take our paper or our pencil and draw a curved line going up and then curving back down, hitting that line, okay? Now what we're gonna do, that's the top of our first scoop, and then we're gonna draw scalloped lines for the bottom of our scoop. And scalloped lines means when you are drawing a curve line, coming back up and up, uh, down and up, and then not stopping, not having any spaces in between, you're just drawing again another upside down curve line. So almost like connecting letter U's 
from one side going around to the other side of our rainbow curve. Okay, we have the top scoop done. Now what we're gonna do is just below that uh, curved scallop line right below on the fold, we're gonna draw another kind of curved line going out and in. Almost like a skinny letter C. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side on the fold. Curve out and in. Okay, then that's our second scoop. So now that we have the sides of our scoop, we're gonna draw those scallop lines again. So curve out and up like this. Little connected letter U's there. Okay, for our third scoop, same thing. On the fold, we're gonna do a curve line out and in. Same size on the other side. Our scalloped lines connecting those two curve lines for our third scoop. Okay, our fourth and final scoop, we're gonna do it right below. So same thing, curve line on the fold, same size on the other side, and then scallop line connecting the two. Awesome. That should leave you enough space for our ice cream cone. Now, if you only have a little bit of space for your ice cream cone, that's okay. It doesn't matter if your ice cream cone is really long or really short, as long as you have some space to add it, that's totally fine. So in order to do it, I'm just gonna draw a diagonal line from the side of my ice cream scallop all the way down almost to the middle of the bottom of the page. Then I'm gonna do the other diagonal line starting from the side of my ice cream cone, going down and meeting up in the same point. Great, okay. So now that we have our scoops drawn, what you can do is you can also take out your black marker. We're gonna outline um, all of our lines. If there's anything that you want me to erase and adjust, that's fine, you can do that now. But if you, everything looks okay to you, let's get out our black marker and let's go over our lines. Um, if you would like to, before we outline, if you wanted to add a cherry on top and the frosting, you can do that either with pencil or the black marker, but all it simply is is a circle at the top and then a big wavy line at the top for the frosting, up to you. Okay, so if we have everything that we want, let's take out our black marker. We can outline our pencil lines that we just made of the ice cream cone, of the frosting, or syrup, our other ice cream cone. Next one. The last ice cream cones, scoop. Okay. And the outline of our cone. If you want the texture of your ice cream cone to have these lines, all they are are diagonal lines going across from top to bottom and then also from the other side. So watch how I do it. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing parallel diagonal lines going from this side from the top going down to the bottom all the way through, and then on the other side, I'm just gonna crisscross them with diagonal lines going in the other direction. So going from this side from top to bottom so that they overlap, okay? There we go. All right, so now we have the outline of our ice cream uh, sundae cone. Now it's time to start practicing creating different values or tint shades and tones of our color. Now I had used pink for this uh, example, but you can use any color that you would like for your ice cream. But first, before we pick our main color, let's get out our black crayon. Because what we're gonna do is our first scoop that's on the cone, we are going to create um, kind of the darkest part of our value scale um, by creating a dark 
shade of our color, which means that we're gonna add that color onto black. So take out your black crayon, and on that first scoop, we're gonna take that black crayon, and we are just going to fill in that first scoop. Okay, so use your best coloring to uh, do small strokes, overlapping, back, forth, back, forth, trying to stay in the lines. You don't have to press too hard um, with the black crayon because we're gonna leave a little bit of the white of the paper showing through so that when we add our color, you can see the color, okay? So here I have my scoop with my black crayon where I was pressing just normally and filling it in, trying, to, trying not to have too much white space or gaps in between. For my next one on top, what I'm going to do is I'm still gonna use my black crayon, but I'm gonna try to make it a medium gray, meaning I don't want it as dark as this color. I want it a little bit lighter. So how do I do that with crayon? That means that when I'm uh, filling in, I'm not pressing hard with my crayon. So use your black crayon, do your strokes, but barely press down using very, very easy pressure. Notice I'm still filling in it and there's no white spaces in between. I'm still using small strokes, but I'm not pressing down hard with my crayon. Because I'm not pressing down hard with my crayon, the black that is just barely pressing down is allowing the white of the paper to show through and it makes it look like a gray. Look at that, the difference. Okay, so you can go ahead and use your crayon to lightly fill in the next scoop, okay? For our scoop above, I'm not gonna put any black in it because that's gonna be just our pure color and then um, at the top is our tint and I'll show you how to do that. So let's put our black crayon away now that we have the black and the um, gray scoop. Here's where you get to choose your ice cream color. So remember, it can be as imaginative as you want. If you want lime ice cream, you can use a lime green. If you want blue ice cream, you can do blueberry, it's, it really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. If you even wanna use brown to show different chocolates, that's totally fine too. What I'm gonna do, I think, you know what, I think lime sounds like a very interesting uh, ice cream color, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use um, my green. So on this first layer scoop, I'm gonna take whatever color you choose, you're gonna take whatever color you choose, and you are going to fill in that scoop on top of your black with whatever color you choose. So I'm gonna take my crayon and I'm gonna press pretty hard while I'm filling in on top of the black. That way, because black is, as you know, the strongest of the color wizards you really need to press hard with whatever color you're using for it to show up. But notice how even with crayon, you can mix two colors together by putting a layer of um, some color on top of the other. There we go. So now I have my shade of my green because I added my color with black. However, for my next one, I'll be adding my color to gray. Which one am I making? A tint, shade, or tone? Oh, you're right, I'm making a tone. A tone is when you add gray, or white and black mixed together, to a color. That makes a tone. So I'm gonna get out my uh, crayon again, and I'm gonna do a layer on top of my gray scoop. Notice how already, because I didn't press down too hard with my black, that means that my lime green is showing up so much more and it's a much lighter value than my bottom scoop. 
and it's just gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter. So for the scoop above my tone, is just gonna be the pure color. So I can take my crayon and I can just fill in that scoop normally just with my pure color that I've chosen. Okay, but I'm still pressing pretty hard, filling in all the white space using small strokes back, forth, back, forth, trying to stay in the lines and fill in that scoop. All right, now that I have my shade, my tone, and my pure color, I'm going to create my tint. And remember, a tint is when you add white to a color. But wait a minute. The way we're not going to do this, we're not going to add a white crayon on top of my green crayon because that doesn't really work as well as it would with like paint. We're going to do a sneaky trick. In order to have more white with your color, it has to do all with how hard you press with your pressure. What I'm going to do with this one is that I'm going to, just like how I did with my gray, I'm barely pressing down when I'm filling in this color. Because I'm not pressing very hard, again, the white of the uh, paper is showing through so that my scoop looks much lighter, like a tint. There we go. So again, if, if there's not a big difference between these two scoops, you can go back into your scoop right below and press a little harder so it makes it very obvious that this is your tint and this is your regular color. Okay, I'm gonna leave my frosting white to show the full kind of value scale. <laughs> um, but you can fill in your cherry any color that you want. I'm gonna fill it in red because cherries are red. Now, for your cone, you can, again, choose any color, but if you wanted to have it be that sort of cone color, you can make a tint of orange. Now, how do we make a tint again with crayons? You're right, it means that I'm not pressing hard, I'm pre pressing very softly. In fact, I can have my crayon on the on its side, so you can take your crayon and have it be on its side, pinch it, and uh, you can move that back forth, back forth to create a, a tint. Look at that. That's my sneaky trick. And in fact, if you wanted to make use that same tactic to easily fill in the background with a tint color, you can again, Pick any color that you want. Let's see, maybe I'll use yellow. Have the crayon be on its side, like so. So if you have a crayon with a wrapper, if you're allowed, you can take off the wrapper and do it uh, like how I'm gonna do it, but I put it on the side, and then I hold down my paper with one hand, and then I just pinch and move that crayon on its side, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, as I'm filling it in. Notice how it, that shading technique that I'm using is still allowing some of the white of the paper to show through. So it's kind of like a tint, but look how quickly it fills in the negative space or the background space of my drawing. It's, it goes so much quicker. I love this technique. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish coloring in my background. You can use whatever colors you want to fill in your background. I just chose yellow randomly. All right, so there we go. It looks as though I'm finished with my value scale ice cream cone. Um, if you need to take more time to finish up, that's okay. Uh, but I hope you had fun with this project and I can't wait to see yours.